Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1023. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 1023, click on the link below the video. Hey, we have an amazing video here with lots of array formula concepts, all to do one simple thing. In fact, let's go over to look at the uh, uh, answer sheet. Here is a list of customer names. And in this cell right here, I want a drop down that shows me a unique list of customers' names. But if I add a new name here, I want this list to only show me a unique list, including any of the new entries added. All right. This is going to involve a bunch of array formula concepts. This is my new book, Control Shift Enter Mastering Excel Array Formulas. A lot of the concepts we touch on in this video are covered in these chapters here. Now, here's our column with customers, right? We're first going to count how many unique customers in this column, and then we're going to extract them to this column. Then we're going to make a define name dynamic formula that will pick up these names and deliver it to our data validation drop-down list. Now we'll start with a unique count. With a unique count, there's basically two ways you can go. You either use the count if function or the frequency function. Now count if function is great uh, because it's simple compared to the frequency function method. However, the count if function can, on large data sets, really slow down your calculation time, like by thousands of ton thousands of percentage points. All right, so I'm going to show you the frequency method. All right, these are text items, though, and the frequency function can only deal with numbers. Usually, you give it a bunch of numbers with repeats in the data and then some bins to count, and it tells you how many are in each category. So it counts items in a category. But we have text items, no problem. We're going to actually look at the match function to help us generate numbers from text items. And we have to deal with empty cells. Now I actually have another similar video, 698, but it doesn't deal with these empty cells. All right, so in the data array, I'm going to say if and make an array formula, an array operation here. I'm going to say if anything in this column F4 is not empty. Now I'm going to use the not, which is less than, greater than, and then the syntax for empty, which is two double quotes. Now technically, that's a null text string, and it will search for either empty or null text string. But that's going to work for us. Anytime it sees an empty, uh, not an empty, that's going to give us a true. That means all of these items here. Then what do we want? This is where we use our match. Now the match function is expecting a single item. We need to get numbers from text items. So I'm going to highlight the entire column and hit F4. Right now, this lookup, lookup value, we're giving it a bunch of items. But watch this, comma. Here's the lookup array, F4. We definitely want to use exact match because we have duplicates. But check this out. What we've done is a function argument array operation right there. Because we gave it all of them and match delivers relative position, match will spit out a 1 for chin, but also a 1 here and a 1 here. If we had Sue here too and Sue down here, it would be a 2 down here also. If I Highlight this and hit F9. You can see, oh, there's our numbers for our data array inside of frequency. The NAs will be ignored by the not empty here, Control Z. Now I'm going to close this off by not putting a false argument in there. It'll put a false in. And check this out. F9, there are our numbers and falses, Control Z, right in the data array. Now we need to take the 1, 1, 1 and gather them up into one position. So I'm going to, for the bins, do a, create a very important formula element. This formula element creates an array of relative positions. So we take the row. That gives us all the rows there. That won't quite give us what we want because it'll give us 2, 3. So we subtract from it row of the first item in this column. That'll give me 2 minus 2, which is not quite what we want because we want 1 all the way to the, the last relative position. So we add 1 back in. All right, so that bins array. This is a formula element to create relative positions, F9. Absolutely beautiful. Those are the categories. Notice there's a 1 to, as a category. The match is going to spit out three ones. So in a moment when we evaluate the entire frequency, you'll see a 3 there. And that's how we can. Uh, 
find the position of our unique item. Now I'm going to close off the frequency, highlight the whole thing. F9, you got to be kidding me. There's the three, there's the one for Sue, and there's the one for Chin. Now, here's a great next trick. We're going to put this array created by the frequency function into the if logical test. Any non-zero number will be true. All the zeros will be false. Control Z. So we simply go if. That whole big thing there is just our logical test, comma, what are we doing here? Unique counting, so the value if true is going to be 1. Now, this is the essential part inside of uh, a unique counting formula when you use frequency. If I highlight this and hit F9, there's our falses and 1s. Now we can simply put it inside of this sum, and that will count unique. Now, the if function. Anytime you have a, an array operation inside of the logical test, it doesn't matter what's on the outside of it, you will have to do Control-Shift-Enter. That's why we didn't use some product here. You ready? Control-Shift-Enter. And it gives me a unique count. If I put a chin here, no way that number doesn't change. If I put a do, that number will change. I'm going to delete that. The inside part here, that's what we use for counting unique. But check this out. That value, if true, is a 1. When we get down to our extracting formula to extract a unique list, this inside part will be exactly the same except for that 1. So I'm going to copy this. All right, I'm going to click Escape. Now, we're going to need a formula that, as we copy down, shows nothing as we get past row 3, because there's only three unique count. We could use the if error, or we can use the if function. You basically never want to use if error when you're doing an extracting formula, especially when you have large data sets, if you can think of a logical test to turn the formula off. Now, that's a big, one of the ideas in this book. That's in chapter 9 here. So we have a simple way of showing an empty cell instead of the big, long extracting formula. When we get down below row 3, we simply use our rows function. And I'm sitting in E4, E dollar sign 4 colon E4. That's a number incrementer, expandable range. As we copy, it's rows. But as we copy this down, the, the range expands. And we'll get 1, 2, 3, 4 as we copy down. I'm going to say anytime that is greater than our 3, in essence, we already did the heavy lifting up here in this cell, right? This is like a helper cell. We simply, when the rows get bigger than 3, comma, the value of true, I want to show nothing, that null text string. Otherwise, and here's the big uh, unique list data extraction formula. I'm going to use the index, and I'm trying to extract things from this. By the way, in all of these formulas here, since this data list has to expand, you want to highlight as far down below uh, that you need to to accommodate all potential values. I'm going to hit F4, comma, the row number. Well, right now we want relative position 1, 2, and 4. So that formula up here we can use. But we're going to have to change one little part of it. But since it's going to give us simultaneously in the row number, a 1, a 3, and a 4, we're going to have to put it inside of the small and extract those relative positions as we copy our formula down. So I'm going to use small. And guess what? That array, Control V from up here. Well, what do we want? We want those relative positions. Right now, we just deliver a 1, 1, 1 as we copy down. But guess what? We replace that 1 in the lot and value of true with our absolutely important formula element for creating relative positions, Control-V. Now, if I come to the end here, click Array and hit F9, you can see now instead of 1, 1, 1, false, 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 as we saw up in this formula, we have 1, 2, false, 4, false, 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 so only the relative positions. Now, we need to extract those as we go down, so Control-Z, and we come to the K and simply use our formula incrementer right here. 
close parentheses on the small. That whole small is just going to deliver a single row number, a relative position to row number, F9. It's 1 right now because it's chin. But then as we go down, it will be 2 and then 4, Control-Z. That is a big, huge formula element. It's just delivering a row number. I close off the index, and then I close off the value of false. Remember, value of false is the data extraction formula. Control-Shift-Enter, we got to use that keyboard because the if function contains an array operation. Control-Shift-Enter, that's us telling Excel this is an array formula. Those curly brackets up in, uh, you can see one of them right here. That's Excel telling you that it understood this is an array formula. I'm going to copy this down. And now, if I come here and put do, we get our 4 and our next value extracted. Now, this formula down here is actually delivering that null text string. And that is a thing. So we want to uh, be careful on how we create, because we want to create our uh, dynamic dropdown that picks up these names. But I don't want a bunch of empty cells in our uh, dropdown. So we want to create a dynamic define name formula. And I'm going to do it with the index function. I'm going to say equals this cell reference. That's the first cell reference in our range. And it will always be the first one. And I'm going to type a colon and come back and lock this F4. Right now, that's the beginnings of a range, cell reference, colon, cell reference. But we're going to make the index look up a cell reference. Now I'm going to highlight this whole range. And again, this one should be as tall as necessary to accommodate all potential values, F4. And the relative position, well, guess what? I already have that information right here. So I'm simply going to click on that cell, F4. Close parentheses. Because the index, if I highlight just the index and not the colon, F9, it picks up. It does exactly what it's supposed to. Index looks up the third item in the list, Control-Z. But if I put it in the context of a colon, which means that's it's expecting a cell reference. It'll now, when I highlight this, give me a range of cells. Now I'm going to Control-Z. I'm going to enter this with Control-Shift-Enter. And I'm going to run Formula Evaluator, Alt-M-V. And watch right here as I either click with my mouse or hit Enter. And there's index underline, Enter. There we can see that it actually looked up the cell reference E6. All right, now I'm going to copy this formula and paste it up into the Name Manager, Control-C, Escape, Control-F3 to get to Name Manager. I'm going to click New. Actually, this one should not be here. I'm going to call this something like DY for Dynamic Data Validation and then List. So that's what I'm going to call DY, DV, List. And I'm going to come down here and Control V. Click OK. Now I'm always going to look. Sometimes when you put these complicated formulas up here, it puts double quotes in. It thinks it's text. So you got to look for those double quotes. It looks like it's all working good. I'm going to test it by clicking this Collapse button. And sure enough, there we go. Uncollapse. Click Close. Now I can come over here, Alt D L, Tab L, Tab F. 3 to open up the paste name text box. And I'm going to select this, the name we just created. Double click. There it is. So as a formula. And then click OK. And so now I see Sue. If I come over here and type do, there we have picked it up. A dynamic data validation drop down list to create a unique list of names from a column of names. Now, if you want this to be sorted, that's like the most complicated array formula I've ever done. I learned it from Dominique in the Mr. Excel message bar. And I stepped through that amazing formula. It's uh, in large part dependent on knowing the mamult function, which is an array function. Uh, we'll leave that for the either the DVD or this uh, textbook. But this is a pretty useful um, set of steps to create a great Excel solution. All right, we'll see you next video.